here's kind of the plan for the LEDs. So this big thing just looks like a giant metal frame, but it's actually backwards right now. Uh, the front is against the wall. It's just like that for storage. Um, the MIDI keyboard will sit between those two uh, rails there. And then what I plan to do with the addressable LEDs is build uh, a bunch of tubes that come out of the, the back of it like this. And then the addressable LED strips will be on those tubes. So when you play the piano, it'll look almost like there's like light cascading out of the back of it. It'll look pretty neat. So what I'll need to do is cut these tubes to length. I'm gonna try a technique for bending them that I've never done before. So we don't actually have a tube bender here. I wish we did, but we don't. Um, we have a tube roller, but we don't have the right type of dies to do this type of, uh, on square tubing. So I'm gonna cut notches uh, in the using the bandsaw that don't go all the way through, and then I think that'll allow the the tube to get kind of a bend to it. Uh, we'll see, it'll be an experiment. So I need five four foot pieces of steel. If you mess this part of your project up measuring, you're totally screwed. So uh, the trick here is that I, I wanna mark in the center of where I want my blade to go. So if you think about like the thickness that this pen is gonna make, the mark it's gonna make is probably three millimeters wide. So if you're not careful when you're doing that, your cuts can be a few millimeters off, which can, can really mess you up. You can fill it in with a MIG welder, but it looks like garbage then. My goal here is for the blade to cut right in the middle of that, which should be four, uh, four feet. The other trap is, so I made this mark, and it would be really tempting now to just copy that mark onto the other three pieces, or the other two pieces. Don't do that because what you get then is, uh, in robotics or signaling, I guess you would call this drift. Basically it's where one error affects the next error, affects the next error, affects the next error. You could also call that like a compounding error. You'll get the exact same thing if you depend on one potential, potentially erroneous, errorful, I don't know. Anyway, but one potentially shitty measurement to inform the next potentially shitty measurement. Just measure it every time and then you'll have an equal amount of shittiness on every single one. Here's how this bandsaw works. You'll find this bandsaw, this jet horizontal metal cutting bandsaw in like every single metal shop in the world. There's this thing which adjusts how fast the saw comes down. So if I release it, right, it's released now, it's locked. That's locked, that's unlocked. And if I rotate this, I can open it or close it to, to control how fast the saw is gonna come down. So I'm gonna get it close to the surface and then slow it down to zero and lock it. And then get my metal aligned. So I want that saw, like I was saying earlier, to be right, 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 right in the middle of the, of the mark that I made. Then it's just a matter of turning the saw on and giving it time. This is the part, by the way, of doing projects that I hate, uh, just because it takes forever. And you, you basically just sit there watching the saw not doing anything. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna cut this. When the saw gets through the top layer, it's going to try and fall really fast. So what I'm going to do is basically catch it. This part's much more organic, uh, so I cut these all down to size, and now I need to make the cuts uh, to do, this is, I, honestly, I guess I would call this a kerf bend. Um, so I just sort of chose these places. I don't, you know, that's not based on any measurement or anything, that's really just sort of eyeballing what it should look like. So I'm gonna make those cuts, and then I'm gonna look at it and see if I like it, and then copy those cuts onto something else. Um, I'm gonna use the chop saw for this because it makes a much wider, the kerf on it's much, much larger. The kerf, by the way, is the width, the width that you remove uh, from the material when you make a cut. I'm gonna go grab that and try it out. This is the chop saw. Uh, it's much, much, much less, I would say, delicate than the band saw is. It's loud and it makes a big cut and it makes a lot of sparks and all kinds of stuff like that. 
perfect for what I'm doing, but I actually don't particularly like this tool just because it's kind of blunt. Good and tight. So this is what the, pe the steel looks like now that it's all chopped up and there's the bend. Uh, pretty close to what I wanted so I'm really happy with this. This worked out really really well. I think it's going to look awesome. Now I just need to weld those, um, those kerfs, weld the, weld the gaps basically so that it holds its bend and I'm going to kind of line it all up and see how it looks together. I have really nice gloves that I bought. But when it was really cold uh, this winter, I brought them home to use in the Jeep for driving, like for keeping my hands warm, and I forgot them at the house. And so now I have to use these pretty crappy kind of, you know, these are the community, everyone can use some gloves. So it's gonna get a little loud. The lesson I've had to learn many times is to first do a little tack and then do a full weld. So many times I've been like, oh, this looks good, I'll just weld it, and then it, it, it suffers from heat expansion or something moves, and it is a huge pain to grind that weld completely down and start over. So I'm just gonna tack this up real quick. It's totally not strong enough to stay. Uh, then I'm gonna look at it. If it looks good, then I'll put a real weld on it. That is how the kerf bends came out. I am super, super happy with that. I think this looks pretty much perfect. Uh, like, I'm pumped about this. Um, so what I have to do now is fill in the beads here. These are just tacks. I have to finish the beads. Uh, and then I have to mount it to um, a, a pole that'll mount to the, to the piano. So I'm really happy with this, awesome. The other thing we did kind of between welding and now was uh, that kid, uh, there's a high school kid that I've been helping with a, a project where she's monitoring the heart rate of her cat and then if the heart rate goes above a threshold it buzzes alarms and stuff like that. I think it's just going to make the cat explode uh, but she came in again tonight and we worked a bunch on it and I think we've got it to a pretty good point for her science fair. Anyway, that's why I stopped working on the piano thing. Um, it's pretty late now, which is why we're gonna go home instead of finishing that. So we'll finish it tomorrow. All right, bye.